everybody, it's Dove Hammer here and I'm back at you with another harmonica tutorial. This one is part two of one that I started last week about the subject of tone, getting good tone on your harmonica. Uh, as I explained last week, the word tone means um, the quality of the sound, what a single note sounds like coming out of your harmonica. What you aim for is a big, fat, kind of powerful tone that, that's pleasing to the ear, that makes people want to hear more, rather than a small, kind of weak, hesitant tone. Okay, and tone is something that we work on a lot and try to be aware of and improve as time goes on. So in part one, I discussed a few important things such as breathing and keeping your, um, your air passages all free and your muscles loose and dropping your jaw to make your mouth a little bigger. Those things all contribute to tone. Got a few more small things to add on the subject here today. Uh, let's start with what I'd call the elephant in the room, embouchure. If you've uh, gone into any harmonica issues online, I'm sure you've seen lots of arguments between people on embouchure, that is how you hold the harmonica in your mouth, um, whether it's your tongue blocking or puckering. Um, if you, um, there's big controversies among players on that. A lot of uh, tongue blocking players say that that's the only way to get good tone out of it. Uh, some uh, people who play um, puckering say that you don't need to tongue block to get good tone, you can get it anyway. Personally, I switch between those two embouchures. I tongue block a lot and I also play puckering. Um, I started out as a pucker player and then I learned to, to tongue block because I wanted that sound for playing blues. It's a bigger, I think it's a bigger tone. I think I sound bigger. Like if I play a single note here, uh, tongue block, or if I do it um, puckering, I think there's a difference. I think my tone is bigger tongue block because I'm opening my mouth a little bit wider. On the other hand, I, I will admit that's a small, it's a real nuance, and you might not even hear the difference here on this video. Uh, plus, I have to say, there's a lot of really, really great harmonica players who are 100% uh, pucker players. Junior Wells, Paul Butterfield, Jason Ricci. So, if all those guys can create the great tone that they have puckering, I'd say you don't have to tongue block to get great tone. Um, so that's my take on the subject about that. All right, next up, your hands. Uh, one of the kings of tone was the great uh, Big Walter Horton, and he often said that a big part of his sound was his hands, what he did with his hands. Now, some people don't hold a harmonica at all. So if you're playing it on a rack, for example, um, playing guitar and with it on a rack, then there's nothing you can do with your hands. But assuming that you're holding the harmonica in your hands, standing in front of a microphone or acoustic completely, or even holding a microphone, there's a few different things you can do with your hands. Now there's several different ways to hold a harmonica. The way I hold a harmonica is like this. I put it between, in my left hand, because I'm right-handed, put it in my left hand, between the thumb and the forefinger like this, holding it just one finger like that. And then we we'll use the rest of the hand to create half a box half an acoustic chamber, which I then complete the other half by using my other hand, like hold it like this. Now the difference between closed and open like this. I can do a lot of different uh, little, play a lot of different games there with, with tone, the difference between the closed and the open. Now I'm going to let you on another little secret that I learned many years ago from a great, great harmonica pl player. A great country blues harmonica player named Phil Wiggins taught me this at a class that I attended of his many years ago. Because uh, Phil, instead of holding his hands like that, thumb to thumb, was putting his middle finger on the end of the harmonica here, like that, and then leaves you all this part of your hand behind the harmonica. Because when you're playing the low notes, this whole high end is open to the back. But if I close it in, I'm putting my this part on my cheek, I'm closing it completely, making it uh, more of a sealed chamber there. Now listen to the difference between open and closed when I do this. So if you want a dramatic difference between your open and your closed, play all kinds of wah-wah games, or just generally to get a nice deep kind of tone. This is this is what how I often play like this. So that's about your hands. You can do all kinds of things with your hands like this. Now you may ask, but how do you do that if you have to hold a microphone, if you're playing amplified? Well, that's why I'm holding, holding, I'm only holding the harmonica with one finger. I got all these, all this 
uh, that I can use to hold the microphone. For example, if I'm holding a bullet shaped mic like this uh, uh, static JT30, I'll put two fingers to hold the mic, that's plenty, against my palm. Leave this finger in the middle here. This is a distance that I'm going to keep between the harmonica and the microphone so that the chamber that I create when I close it with my other hand will also resonate a little bit. You know, I don't want it right up against the grill. I keep it a little bit away, a finger's length away, like that. You don't hear a difference right now because the microphone's not plugged in. I'm just showing you how to hold it, like this. Or if you're just holding a plain stick mic, like this cool little uh, Ultimate 57 mic that I have, again, uh, I'm, I'm holding it with two fingers, I'm keeping a distance here, and I'm closing around it. So I can do all the same stuff holding the mic that I can do when I'm not holding it. So that's as far as your hands go. That's stuff that you can do with your hands, with the microphone. The last little thing I want to talk to you about tone is called vibrato. Now, this is going to be a very general going over because vibrato is a big subject and it deserves uh, a whole tutorial on its own, if maybe more than one. But vibrato is kind of something that gives you a signature sound. All good players have a vibrato kind of gives a little bit of extra soul to your sound. Now, when you're playing really fast uh, licks, you don't have time to do a vibrato. The vibrato is used more on slower, soulful things, or when you have a long note all of a sudden, you know, go... So on the fast notes, I don't bother. I don't have the time for it. But you heard when I went to the long notes that I held a little bit longer, I, I vibrated a little bit. So there are several kinds of vibratos. One of them is what I can do with my hand. That's a little bit sometimes too effect effect kind of thing. Sometimes I don't always want to do it. It's kind of old time cowboy songs kind of. But sometimes I'll do it. Um, there's a, a diaphragm one that you do by moving your, your diaphragm in and out. For high notes, I sometimes like to use what they call a jaw diaphragm. That is making kind of chewing motion with my jaw. But what I use most often is what I call the throat dive, uh, uh, throat uh, vibrato. The throat vibrato is just, I'm sort of almost closing my air passage with my uh, Adam's apple here. Sort of the way I, the way I, I stop when I, when I do, uh, um, when I go, when I do staccatos like that for my throat, I cut off the air here completely. When I want to do vibrato, I, I only almost cut off and I let it get very close to close, but not completely close. But that, that's, I'm going to have to do a full tutorial on that because it's a big subject and uh, it's something you should learn to do. So vibrato is another way of making big tone. Using your hands is a way of making big tone. Tongue blocking can help making big tone. Uh, and generally just constantly listening to it and being minded of your tone when you practice, when you play, when you record yourself. Think about your tone. Think about, is it big enough? Do I want it bigger? Can I make it nicer? How can I make it nicer? These are a few pointers, and I hope this uh, helped you a little bit. If it did, I would really be grateful if you gave me a like here. If you like these tutorials, please do consider subscribing to the channel, because I have not only harmonica tutorials here, but music, live shows, etc., etc., uh, and um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment sections or request a subject that you would like me to make a tutorial about. I'll be glad to answer each and every request and question that you write down in the comments section. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you back next time.